cooks everywhere. And by Uncle Sam, making simple cereal since 1908. It's undeniable that meatloaf is the quintessential diner food, but the diner wasn't invented until 1872 in Providence, Rhode Island. A guy called Walter Scott figured out the newspaper men who worked through the night had nothing to eat, so he wanted to sell them food, which he did out of baskets. He eventually bought a horse-drawn wagon and started selling sandwiches and slices of pie for five cents each out of the wagon. He made quite a lot of money. About ten years later, a guy called Sam Jones was standing in the rain one night eating his sandwich from one of these wagons and said, hey, it would be nice to be sitting down on a stool inside. So we built a much better lunch wagon. It was bigger, had stools, and had a bigger kitchen. And the American diner was really born. By 1900, people were manufacturing them. Abandoned horse-drawn trolleys that were used in cities were used as diners. And of course, they were immobile. And eventually, the diner got very nice in the 1920s when women started going to diners on their own and eating out. One of the other things that happened was the kitchens got bigger, the menus got bigger, hot food was served. And ground beef, which really wasn't that available before 1900, became very popular. Now, one of the recipes they used was meatloaf. It probably came from Germany. It was Fleischkugel, or meat dumpling with suet and onions. And there was thousands of variations created over the 20th century. Now, one of the ones we love the most we're going to talk about today, we're going to go in the kitchen with Julia and make a great version of meatloaf with mushroom gravy. <laughs> We're no strangers to meatloaves. Not at all. So my best friends are meatloaves. <laughs> well, we've done almost everything here at this country over the years. Today we're doing meatloaf with mushroom gravy. That's right. And my question is, do you have any tricks left in your bag? Always a few. Because we've, we've tried almost everything. We have. And in fact, when we started on this recipe, we tried our old recipes, as well as a few from the web and our favorite cookbooks. What they all had in common is they're trying to boost the flavor of meatloaf, because meatloaf can be quite plain, especially if the gravy's a little plain. And so we turn to our favorite ingredient, which are mushrooms, which are clearly in the gravy. But we're also going to put them into the meatloaf, which really will boost the meatiness, the heftiness, because they have that umami, that meaty flavor. Okay. So we're going to use two types of mushrooms. These are dried porcinis. This is only a quarter of an ounce, which isn't that much. And the thing you want to do is rinse them really quickly first to get any grit out. And then we're going to rehydrate them in some water. This is a cup of water. And I'm going to put them in the microwave for about a minute, and then I'll boil the water and soften them. And I'm just going to let them stay there and steep until they're nice and soft. All right, so while those are in the microwave, these are obviously white button mushrooms. And some of these are going to go into the sauce. About five ounces go into the sauce. The other five ounces we're going to put into the meatloaf. So we're going to whip them up in the food processor to very fine pieces and incorporate nicely into the meatloaf. But before we process them, I'm going to process 16 saltines. And you usually do put a binder in meatloaf to help it hold together. Very often it's bread, but saltines work better because they're drier, so it makes the meatloaf a little less mushy. So I'm going to put the saltines in the food processor for about 30 seconds till they're very fine crumbs. I'm just going to take these crumbs and put them in this big bowl behind you. And now into the empty food processor bowl, I'm going to pulse the mushrooms up. And you have to just take about 8 to 10 pulses. And there you go, that's good. You can see they're going to incorporate really easily into the meatloaf. Okay. And now we're going to saute up some aromatics for the meatloaf. So we have a tablespoon of vegetable oil. We're just going to start sauteing these onions. And this is just one onion, chopped fairly fine. We're going to cook this until they're nice and brown and soft. And that takes about 6 to 8 minutes. So now it's time to add those mushrooms, if you wouldn't mind. Mm. The mushrooms have a lot of moisture in them, so we're going to drive off that moisture and intensify their flavor. This is a quarter teaspoon of table salt. Now, again, that help to draw out the moisture. So this has been cooking for about five minutes, and you can see how much drier it is. That's going to make the meatloaf have a little more complexity, a little more interest. Well, as you said, this actually has umami, which means glutamates, which is the same thing meat has. Okay. So it does actually taste meat, too. Mm -hmm. Looks like it. Tastes like it. It does look like it. it this is four cloves, minced garlic. We're just going to saute this for about 30 seconds till you really smell it and you lose that raw garlic edge. And that's it. So I'm just going to add this mixture to the bowl of processed saltines. We're going to let this cool for about 15 minutes or so. And also I'm going to wipe this skillet out until it's nice and clean because we're going to use it again. So this mixture has 
has been cooling for about 15 minutes and now it's time to make our meatloaf. And here are those porcinis that were sitting in the microwave and you can see they're nice and soft now. And so what we're gonna do is drain off that liquid but reserve the liquid because that liquid has a lot of flavor. And notice I'm using a strainer and a coffee filter. You want to strain off any grit before you use the liquid. Now some of this liquid we're actually going to put into the meatloaf, a quarter of a cup, and the rest we're going to add to the sauce later to give it a nice hearty mushroom flavor, along with, of course, the porcinis themselves. And we're going to add this porcini liquid to the saltine crumbs and the aromatics, a little bit of wish to share, which Mm, of course, has that umami flavor. So this is a tablespoon of Worcestershire, a teaspoon of salt, three quarters of a teaspoon of black pepper, two eggs. I'm gonna stir this up. And now, of course, it's time to add the meat. So this is a pound of pork. Pork is higher in moisture, so it really mixes in with these other binders and flavors more easily than the beef. At some point, you gotta give up the spoon and go for your hand. So you mix in the pork till it's pretty much combined, and then you add the pound of 85% lean ground beef, and then I'm gonna mix this in with my hands so it's nice and uniform. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, we learned over the years in the test kitchen that when you make meatloaf, you don't wanna put it in a loaf pan because it really just sits in those juices and gets soggy. You don't get any of that good crust. So very often we put it on a baking sheet. But for this recipe, we decided to be a little bit more streamlined. We're actually gonna make it in the skillet. So I'm gonna take this mixture. So there was something else in your bag of tricks? Mm-hmm, always, yeah. always. You just wanna shape it into an oval loaf that's roughly 10 inches long and about six inches wide. All right, now I'm just gonna go wash my hands real quick and then we can put her in the oven. So this meatloaf is ready for the oven. We're gonna bake it in a 375 degree oven for about 45 minutes or so. What we're looking for is an internal temperature of 160 degrees, and that's how you know it's done. Thank you. Now that's a heat-proof handle on that. I was just checking. It is. That handle's safe up to 400 degrees. For an internal temperature of about 160. Perfect. So now we're going to take the meatloaf out of the skillet. We're going to tent the meatloaf with some foil so that it can stay warm. And so now we're going to make a gravy and we're going to use the skillet. But first I'm going to clean up all these bits that have come off. Schmutz. Yeah, the schmutz. And I'm going to leave the fat behind in the skillet. We're going to use that to saute the mushrooms. So now we're going to put the skillet back over medium high heat and we're going to add five ounces white button mushrooms that we sliced thin. These are the porcinis that we drained and I gave them a quick mince. We're going to cook these down for about six minutes or so until it gets nice and brown. Mm, those are starting to look good. And this is three quarters of a teaspoon minced fresh thyme, the quarter teaspoon of salt. We're just going to stir this in until again it's fragrant. Mm. Now we're going to add a quarter of a cup of all purpose flour. The flour is going to mix with the fat and make a roux. We're going to cook this for a minute or two and it'll sort of toast the flour, drive off its raw flavor, and then we'll whisk in the liquids. All right, so you can see that flour has gotten a little toasty. Now it's time to add the liquids, and this is low sodium chicken broth, two and a half cups. You know, we tried using beef broth, but it was just too tinny and overpowering. The chicken broth really let the flavor of the mushrooms shine through. And of course, we're going to add the rest of this strained porcini liquid, which is about half a cup. A little bit of Worcestershire. This is about three quarters of a teaspoon. So we're going to let this simmer down for about 10 or 15 minutes until it gets nice and thick and gravy like. Mm, doesn't that look good? So we're ready to slice up our meatloaf. Mm -hmm. Do you like the end slices or do you like the middle? No, I like the next slice. Oh, you like that? Oh, yeah, slice that's the one. As they say in Vermont, that's the one that I'm looking for. Here, let's put a little sauce on these. Mm. Oh, this looks good. Mmm. Mm. Oh, it's got real hearty flavor, mm. but it still tastes like meatloaf. It doesn't taste like a veggie loaf. Mm. This is adult meatloaf. 
So the secret to great meatloaf with mushroom gravy is obviously the mushrooms, and we started with two kinds, fresh button mushrooms. We also used dried porcini's, which rehydrated them. And we used both of those in the meatloaf itself and also in the sauce. And the liquid we used for rehydrating those porcini's also went into the sauce. Instead of bread, we used saltine crackers, and that actually kept the meatloaf nice and moist. So there you have it from Cook's Country, one of our favorite Saturday night dinners, which is meatloaf with mushroom gravy.